Now, as of April 20th, 2010, what was your employment? I was employed by Transocean as a chief electronics technician. And how long had you been in that position up to that time? Uh, less than one year. All right. Let's go through your history. When did you come on board the Deepwater Horizon for the first time? July of 08, if I recall correctly. Did you work on any other rigs after you came on board in July 2008? No, sir, I did not. Let's walk through the responsibilities of, of the position you had as of April 20th, the chief electronics engineer. Can you just tell me a little bit about the responsibilities that your position required of you? That, that, that's a very broad question. Uh, as I've explained in the past, I worked on everything from the prop to the top. It had a wire and a signal uh, sending to a computer or a database. Basically, we were responsible for it. Okay, did you work on any of the BOP panels? I worked on the BOP purge panel. Yes, sir, I did. Do you happen to know if that uh, purge panel remained in the automatic setting that you placed it in as, up to April 20th? Uh, the last time that I was called for that panel, it had gone down. Someone had uh, left the back door open to the driller shack too long. The driller shack itself is also a purged environment. Uh, someone had stood with the back door open too long. They had lost purge in that room. The alarm for the driller was received at his station. And at the same time, someone had opened the doors to the BOP control panel, which it's designed to leak some air out. You, you can't have, it can't be a completely sealed environment because if you pressurize a vessel, it becomes dangerous. So that when they open the doors with a lack of positive pressure in the shack and the lack of now seals from the glass doors, the BOP panel did power itself down. Was the setting in automatic? Changed? Was the setting changed after that or did it remain in automatic? Uh, my part of, of that issue was they called me, the assistant driller, uh, Don Clark, called me in my office, said that the panel was dead, I needed to get up to the rig floor immediately. By the time I had arrived at the rig floor, uh, Mark Hay, senior subsea supervisor, had, had beaten me up there. Apparently he was called as well. And he had flipped the key switch from automatic to manual. The panel powered itself back up. Did you have any discussion about what, why it was placed in that setting at that time? Yes, I did with the BP company man that was present. Okay, and do you know the name of the company man at that time? Yes, I do. It was Mr. Donald Bedrain. Okay. And what, just describe this conversation for me. He asked, I asked Mr. Verdreen if he would like me to place that panel back in automatic. At that time, Mr. Hay reported that the entire fleet runs them in bypass, leave it the hell alone. You mentioned some of the other systems that you work with, and I believe you said safety systems. Did I hear you correctly? Yes, sir. What would be encompassed within the safety systems category? Uh, fire and gas system, uh, ESD systems, all the IACS, uh, Integrated Automatic Control Systems, PAGA, uh, which would be our loudspeaker system, anything associated with those. With respect to the fire and gas system, uh, does, that, does that system work in conjunction with any other safety systems? It does. It works in conjunction with the IACS, which is the Integrated Automatic Control System. Um, there are several pieces uh, of the SIMRAD safety system that, that are comprised up of, of a fire and gas, an ESD, vessel control, thruster control. They're, it's a, a, a very large series of subsystems that all report back to a central system. How about the, uh, the emergency shutdown system? Does that have any interaction with the fire and gas system? Yes, sir, it does. It is in the cause and effect matrix. Okay. If fire or gas is detected on the rig, uh, what is the response of the emergency shutdown system? Uh, it depends on where the gas or fire is located and depending on what mode the uh, outputs of those sensors are placed in. What are the different modes that the sensors could be placed in? There are, off the top of my head, at least four modes. There's a uh, just your normal active mode. There would be a uh, passive mode. There would be an inhibited mode. And there will also be an override mode. And what happens in active mode? In active mode, the uh, 
the sensor's data is used by the entire IACS system and would follow the flowchart of the cause and effect matrix. Would the emergency shutdown system automatically uh, activate the dampers and close off airways if um, it's set in automatic and active mode? In some instances, yes. Okay. Are you aware of where the fire and gas sensors are located with respect to any air intakes near the engine room? Every one of them, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Were, was preventative maintenance on the rig something that was generally behind schedule? Continuously behind schedule. Prior to April 20th, were you on Deepwater Horizon uh, when on the Macondo well when the rig took a kick? Yes, I was. What were you working on when that happened? We were having issues with the with the chairs. When you say you're working on the chairs, where where were the chairs? Uh, in the driller shack, the uh, cyber chairs, A, B, and C. Okay, so you're in the driller shack working on the chairs. What specific work were you doing? Um, they were having issues with the software, like locking up, and a. What, what we termed or coined a blue screen of death, where the driller would, would be looking at two, two monitors side by side, looking at all of his parameters, and all of a sudden just the screen would turn blue and he would lose all of his data. Okay, so that had happened and you had been called to the driller shack, is that correct? Yes, numerous times. And as of uh, April 20, 2010, did you feel as though you did have a good understanding of how the safety system worked? I was comfortable in the maintaining and repairing of that system. As I appreciate the system, and, and I know you'll correct me if, if, I'm, if I say this wrong, uh, <coughs> the system was capable of automatically uh, making certain things happen. Correct. Integrated automatic, integrated automated control system. Yes. All right. And one of the things that it was capable of automatically, making automatically happen was uh, activation of, I think I've seen the term, panel alarm. Correct. And that's, that's, a, that's an alarm that's located on a panel in a, in a control room. Correct. And that's, a, that's an audible alarm, beep, beep, beep. Correct. And then the system was also capable of automatically um, sounding the general alarm on the rig. Correct. And it was also capable of automatically um, closing fire dampers. Correct. So the idea is you, you all are drilling a well and, and there's gas downhole, right? Correct. Okay, and that, and that gas is combustible gas. Sometimes. Well, sometimes it's it, toxic. Okay, could be, could be either toxic or combustible. Correct. All right. And uh, you don't want combustible gas to uh, come into contact with an ignition source. Correct. True? And that's one of the things the safety system on the horizon is designed to prevent. Correct. Okay. And, 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 and uh, the automatic closing of air dampers at, on, uh, uh, at intake locations is designed to prevent combustible gas from coming into contact with ignition sources. Correct. And that, that automatic closing of the fire damper, that's a part of the, uh, the fire and gas safety system. Correct. Now, the system, the safety system, um, was also capable of automatically um, stopping ventilation fans. Correct. It would shut down any uh, pumps, any equipment that's operating in that space that's using electricity. It would shut all of that down. Whatever zone engine room number three is in, um, as long as there are two uh, gas sensors detecting high, high levels within that zone, all the air dampers in that zone are going to close. Correct. Uh, and theoretically, that should prevent gas from getting to whatever is inside engine room number three. Correct. And, it, and, and that requires that the system, that sensors be set in the active mode. Correct. And in your, uh, uh, it's your belief um, as the chief uh, electrical 
technician, electronics technician. <laughs> you were going to catch me too. Uh, on the horizon, that the the gas sensors, apart from maintenance activities, should always be in the active mode. Correct. Now, another thing that'll happen when you have this two, uh, these two high, high levels of sensors in a particular zone um, activated uh, is uh, the general alarm will sound. Correct. If you're in the active mode. Correct. Okay. Um, and another thing that'll happen is the panel alarms will sound. Correct. And the visual banner or whatever it is associated with the, with the panels will will light up. Correct. All right. Now, I, I, had you ever seen that situations where gas detection sensors were uh, in a mode that you I think you used the term inhibited before as one of the options? Correct. All right. You've seen you've seen the. Uh, uh, have, in your time on the Deepwater Horizon, had you seen g gas detection sensors put in the inhibited mode? Yes, I have seen them put in inhibited mode. Okay. And had you seen the inhibited mode used uh, separate and apart from maintenance activities? Yes. The standard way the Transocean kept the general alarm on the rig was in the inhibited mode. Correct. All right. So any reason to think that on April 20, 2010, it was in something other than the inhibited mode? No, there's more. And, and again, you, you strongly disagreed with that practice that Transocean used of keeping the general alarm in the inhibited mode. Initially, yes. Yeah. And am, am I correct that the reasons you were given to do that was that, that they kept it in inhibited mode because they didn't want to wake people up at night with false alarms? Correct. They listed their justifications. Yeah. And one of them was they didn't want to pick, wake people up at night. Correct. Now, um, one, of the, one of the reasons that Transocean gave you for inhibiting that automatic activation was that the control stations were manned. Correct. Uh, now, they're manned by whom? DP, DP operators? A DPO and a senior DPO are always on tower. Right. So then, uh, the system, when inhibited, relies on the DPO or, or did you say assistant DPO? No, say DPO or senior DPO. Okay. All right. When inhibited, the system relies on the, uh, either the DPO or the senior DPO being in the vicinity of, aware of, the panel alarm going off. Correct. And in fact, you never heard a general alarm the entire night. No, I did not. And when you got outside, did you see any visual light column alarms for the combustible gas? I looked at at least two different light standards and neither one of them were blinking. And of course, the general alarm wouldn't sound, and the lights, the light alarms wouldn't activate automatically because it or if the uh, fire and gas system alarms was inhibited. Correct. And it's your belief that the system was inhibited. Yes, it was. You know it was. I had no reason to believe they'd ever taken it out. I think you said you next managed to get you, to get to the bridge. You uh, made your way to the bridge after you left your shop, right? Yes, sir. All right, and, and then uh, in the bridge, uh, you encountered the captain. I did. His name is? Captain, I called him Captain Kurt. All right. Uh, and I've seen where you described um, 
the captain as having a deer in the headlights look. Yes, he did. Would that be accurate? Yes. What, what do you mean by that description? He was overwhelmed. Um, I've also seen, I think you said he was dazed and confused. Yes. That that be accurate? Yes. He didn't know what was happening and why. While you were on the horizon while they were drilling at the Macondo, um, did you hear from conversations you had with any of the Transocean crew the Macondo being referred to as the well from hell? Yes, I did. Uh, tell me about those. How did you hear about that term? Uh, a lot of the conditions of that well were similar to the conditions of a previous well we had drilled, which was in the vicinity of Devil's Tower. That well exhibited a lot of the same nasty habits. It had a lot of gas in it. We got stuck. It had, it had issues. We did not receive a well bonus from the one near Devil's Tower, nor were we going to receive a well bonus from this well. The other well was dubbed the well from hell. This became the new well from hell. Okay. Was the previous well from hell at, was it, I'm sorry, Devil's Tower? It was close to Devil's Tower. I don't know the exact block or, or name of it. Uh, that well was, was that well successfully completed? No, it was abandoned. 